Hi, good morning. Thanks for stopping back out at the ranch. I'm Marie and this is Red Heart Quilts. I want to talk to you a little bit more about my line of patterns called Quilt As You Sew. Today I want to show you how to break down the pattern, show you a little bit, info, any, a little bit more information on how to make the pattern. I did an overview before and some of you have asked for more information. In all the patterns, there's five different ones. The one I'm going to show you is Mini Mosaic. All the patterns start the same way. They tell you how to prepare the backing. Then they go into each individual um, pattern that's on the front. So we're going to talk about how to prepare our backing. Um, this one is very obvious. This is a... Um, Drunkard's Path pattern, you can see that the backing fabric comes to the front and becomes your sashing. It's also obvious in the blue, red, and white one. The blue backing comes to the front and becomes your sashing. You can have the backing all one color like the two I showed you, or you can have the backing different colors. But regardless of the colors you choose, it's going to come to the front and become your sashing and your binding. So I'm going to show you how to prepare that. In the pattern I tell you, cut your backing squares 10 inches square, 10 by 10s. The reason I chose 10 by 10s is because you can have four across a 42 inch of fabric. Um, I'm just going to change glasses because those become shades. Can't see very well in them. There. <laughs> um, this is a 10 by 10 square. You can see on this square that I have drawn a line with a Sharpie. You don't want to use a Sharpie. You want to use either a little pencil, a light mark, or you want to use like a water soluble pen that when you wash this quilt, that's going to fade away. But the marking is very important. You go around, you put a one inch line all the way around all four sides. This is the line that you use to fold your block, sew your block. This is our reference line for everything. It's very, very important. Um, once you get that on there, you're going to take it to your iron. You're going to fold to the first line. Fold it, just fold it in half to the line. Fold it in half again, and we're pressing that as we go. See how nice this stays? After we press it, we have that fold in there until we're ready to sew it. If you need to put a little bit of starch on there, you can. You shouldn't have to because if, you, if your iron is nice and hot and you're um, sewing, if you're pressing 100% cotton, your crease should stay in there nice. Once you get all four sides done, you are going to then put your batting right on top inside this line. Nothing is allowed outside your line. Backing, the batting, see the batting is a little bit smaller. It's not going to be as big as my line area. All five patterns tell you to do this. They tell you to mark your line. They tell you to fold it. And you're going to fold twice all the way around. And then they tell you to put your batting in there. I like to use flannel because I like to use flannel in my quilts. Um, Batting to me is a little bit thick for these. I like the, the feel of the flannel in here, but that's your choice. If you want wool batting, you can use it. The pattern I'm showing you today is called Mini Mosaic. I have a larger mosaic pattern, so that's what this one started from. It's just smaller. Inside this pattern, you're going to have a full size template right here. I'm going to take this template and I'm going to lay freezer paper on top of it and I'm going to trace my pattern on my freezer paper on the paper side, not the shiny side. The shiny side, it's wax, so I'm going to be able to press this, what, the shiny side on top of a stack of fabric and then that's going to stick because the wax will actually stick. I'm going to cut this and then you can actually reuse it. You just take the pieces off the piece you cut, stick them back on another um, piece of fabric, and you're ready to go. So I'm stacked up my fabric. You stack up your fabric all the same direction. <clears throat> you cannot put 
one with the pretty side down, one with the pretty side up. All the right sides up or the right sides down. It's just easier to put them all right side up. If you don't have them all facing the same way, some of your pieces will be backwards and it won't work on this pattern. So once you get this pressed on, you can see I pressed it to the top. I have four different colors here. You want to have at least four different colors or four different prints in a block because there's four pieces and that gives you more interest. Once we have that pressed on, you're going to cut around the square. Then you're going to cut piece one, lay it aside, piece two, lay it aside, piece three, lay it aside, four is already cut. I like to lay the pieces right back on my pattern so I don't get confused of where they go. So once I have them cut and once I have them there, we're ready to start putting our block together. We have piece number four. We cut them piece one, piece two, piece three. We're going to sew them piece four to three, three to two and four. I mean two to three and four and backwards. So you cut one, two, three, four, you sew four, three, two, one. First thing we did, we put piece four on top of our batting. Very simple. Our batting is here. Our things are all folded up, all of our edges. Put piece four on there. It's not allowed to go past our lines. Nothing is allowed to go past our lines. So we put a little bit inside. We take a piece three. I'm gonna lay the corner of piece three. I hope you can all see this real well. Just inside my line. And then I'm like, where am I gonna sew it? Well, I know I'm gonna have a, four, a quarter inch seam. So if you need to, you can actually press a seam on there. You don't have to, but if you need to, and if it helps you, especially once until you get the hang of this. So we lay it inside the lines. We've pressed our seam allowance. So I'm going to pin it on both ends. And that is going to tell me where to sew it. Now I'm going to take a ruler, which I don't have over here. I'm going to pretend this is a ruler. I'm going to lay it across my seam allowance and I'm going to draw on the batting all the way to the edge. You do not have to sew this all the way across. You can just sew on your fabric. But you're going to see your stitching on the back and that's actually your quilting because it is quilt as we sew. So as we sew our block together, we are actually quilting our quilt. So I like to continue the line from where I'm going to start just inside my drawn line all the way across to just inside this line. That just is pretty on the back. You can use um, a yellow on this one and you really wouldn't see it. But if you want to sew just from here to here, that's fine. That's, you don't have to sew any farther. If you want to sew from here all the way to here, that's fine too. It's your quilt. You can do it either way you want to. Um, I like to sew it all the way. Once that's sewn, I am going to take it and I'm going to take it to my iron and press it. I'm not going to iron it like I ironed a pair of blue jeans. I'm just going to press it. it. Has nice edge there. Nice and sharp. You notice I have a little dog ear sticking in my past my line. That needs to go away. It is not allowed to go past my line. So we're going to trim the dog ears. You also want to trim the little um, threads from the back. I like to do that as I go because I don't want to have to have a zillion threads to trim when I'm done with this. It's easier for me just to trim it. Every time I sew it, I press it and trim it. <clears throat> we have piece four, piece three. We're now going to put piece two on. You'll see that I did fold this here so I can show you easier. It's going to go inside my line, just like that. I'm going to lay it on. I'm going to take my pins, pin it on there. You can pin it this way. You can pin it this way. Or you can pin it in the end. This is a pretty long one, so I probably would put three or four pins in here. Then I'm going to open it up. Since I have it pressed, I'm now going to move my pins. 
pin it back this way. So again, I don't like to take my pins out when I'm sewing. I'll do anything to not take my pins out. So I put them farther away from my quarter inch. I'm not going to pin them right on my line. This way I can sew and take them out later. So I'm going to sew all the way from this line all the way across. And see, I have my fold, so I can fold that now. I can sew right on the fold. I don't have to draw a line on this one. Sew all the way to just inside my other line. I am not allowed to sew past that line. Batting can't go past the line. The fabric can't go past the line. And I'm not allowed to sew past that line. Nothing is allowed past that line. The reason is because that fabric, everything past the line, is going to come to the front of my quilt and be my sashing. I don't want to see threads on that. I don't want to see the end of a little dog ear on that. So piece three is sewn on. Of course, we're going to press it. Press my piece four. I mean, piece one. So this is piece four, three, two. We have a piece one. Piece one goes right up here. We're going to turn it under. We're going to pin it, sew it, press it, trim it, just like all the other ones. This is our block. Our block is done. Our block is quilted. Don't forget, every time you sew, trim your dog ears. Go to the back and trim your loose threads. You don't want those threads coming into the front, and you don't want to have to sit for hours and trim the threads when you're done. One thing that takes a lot of time, it takes a little while to draw these lines on and to sit and press them. If you want to put a good movie in the TV and sit in front of the TV and do this, this is a good time to do that. We have little tables that we call TV tray ironing boards, and we can take those every place and we just sit in front of the TV. Well, however you like to do it, if you just want to do a few at a time, um, but this is the steps we have now sewn this together. We're going to trim our dog ears off. So now um, we go back to the same instructions that all five patterns have. So all five patterns you do this way. You have to draw it. Then we have to fold them the same way, put the batting the same way. Um, each different pattern is going to tell you how to finish this. This particular one was mini mosaic, and this is how you do this. Whichever one you choose, now we go back to the same direction of sewing our blocks together. Because we have our lines drawn on, we are going to pin on those lines. And then we are going to sew on the lines. Remember, this is already folded. We're going to sew down there. And it just folds right into place. See how nice that fell right back into place? If you need to, you can bring it over here and repress it. But you have a nice straight line now. We just top stitch this line on both sides. Continue to sew as many as you have. If you have eight rows of ten squares, you sew all ten together. Sew these down on all ten. You do not sew your outside edges. That's going to be our um, binding. This is sewn down. I sewed this side with black, just so you could see it. And then I sewed this with the yellow. You see that thread on the back. So make sure your thread that you're sewing this on with, your bobbin thread matches your back. Or if you want a contrast or a variegated, that's fine too. But you do see it on the back. Once you get these sewn together, you're seeing. Then you're going to sew your rows together. So we're going to take our rows, same thing, pin them on the line, sew down the line, and you might have 10 together. Then sew your sashing down. This is going to come here. Our sashing is going to be here. So sew it all down at one time. This I sewed with black thread so you could see the backing, what happens on there, our sashing. On the front, I sewed it with black so you could see my stitching. After our rows, are, our blocks are sewn into rows, our rows are sewn together and stitched. Then our binding, 
just gets folded over. You stitch your binding around and your quilt is done. Your piece is pieced, your quilt's quilted, your binding's on, you are totally done with this quilt. It's quilt as you sew. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a little bit in more information. Our patterns are 1050. We do have all five of them. Um, the different kind of levels, one's very basic, it's just a square inside of a square. And um, so I hope you will get the pattern. You can get it on my website, Red Heart Quilts. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTubes and tell your friends to subscribe. Um, until next time, we'll see you back at the ranch. Thanks.